Quoted from the Economic History Association, the 1920s were a period of vigorous, vital economic growth that marked the first truly modern decade and dramatic economic developments. The adoption of the automobile and the radio, radio stations, and networks broke up isolation in parts of the world and allowed for an easier way of travel. The United States occupied a major position in, in international trade and global businesses. Professional sports became very popular during this time period. All of these aspects contributed to the major economic growth that occurred during the 1920s in America. Our first guiding question is, leading up to the Great Depression, how was the quality of the economy? It was a difficult adjustment to transition back into peacetime after World War I. Labor unions, which had grown strong during the war, fought to maintain their power through a series of strikes in 1919. The labor turmoil and difficulties of the transition back to peacetime production caused a short but sharp recession in 1920 through 1921, with unemployment briefly exceeding 11 percent. This did not last long, however, because of the Commerce Secretary, Herbert Hoover. Hoover was successful in convincing major industrial leaders to voluntarily increase wages and production in order to pull the entire economy out of its recession. By 1922, the economy was growing robustly, a pattern it would follow more or less continuously until the Great Crash of 1929. World War I was beneficial to the economy. America was exporting a lot of steel and other metals to make weapons for the war to European countries. They had factories to produce these metals, and this created many jobs for Americans. The Roaring Twenties was a great time to be rich. Treasury, Treasury Secretary Andrew Mellon was an extremely successful investment banker. He lowered the top marginal income tax rate for the wealthiest Americans from 73% to just 25% while investors enjoyed one of the greatest bull markets in American history. Sheep fueled the economy because their wool was very popular during this time. One sheep sold for nearly $6,000. Some counties depended on selling sheep wool for their income. The average amount of money a country earns in one year for selling wool and sheep was about 125000 even everyone in the country. Wool sold for up to $1 per pound. A few years later, however, in 1929, the price of wool suddenly dropped to, to 0.05 cents per pound. Our second guiding question is, uh, what were the specifics of the economy? Were you considering average pay, employment rates, inflation, uh, then versus now currency, something like that? The average annual earnings of an employed person would be uh, $1,236. The uh, average teacher's salary is $970. There were 1, 600, uh, I'm sorry, 106 million people in the U.S., a little more than that, and uh, 2 million of those people were unemployed. The unemployment rate was 5.2%. The illiteracy rate reached a new low. That would be 6%. Uh, six percent of the population was unable to read or write. That's according to uh, caselibrary.lonestar.edu. If we're looking at inflation rates from 1920 to 1929, the average inflation rate was 0 0.09. So uh, that came from the U.S. inflation calculator and that has inflation rates from the beginning of the 1900s all the way up to current uh, to the present day inflation rate. From the socialsecurity.gov, a dollar in 2012 is the same as eight cents in 1920. In just in the year 1920, the average inflation was 2.73%. Uh, women teachers were paid about $36 a week, and then men teachers were paid $61. Our third question is how did the specifics of the economy affect the people and how they lived during the 1920s? In this decade, America became the wealthiest country in the world, with no obvious rival. Everybody seemed to have a reason reasonably well-paid job, and everybody seemed to have a lot of spare cash to spend. By simply buying, something had a major economic impact. People had to make what was sold and bought. This was the era before robot technology, and most work was labor-intensive, so people did the work. The person who made the products that were sold would get paid and he usually did not save all the money. He too would spend some of it and someone somewhere else would have to make that and so he would get paid. If people were spending, then people had to be employed to make them. They would get paid, spend their money, and the cycle continued. This however meant that people did not work and they could not get paid. 
There were no paid vacations, holidays, or sick leaves. Because people needed money to put food on the table and a shelter over their heads, people could not afford not to work. This reduced people's leisure time. We investigated the conclusions to our questions by collaborating together as a group. The four of us worked together on each of the three questions. We started with question one and we found the information from credible websites. We then compiled our information and discussed them as a group. We did the same for questions two and three. By collaborating, we each contributed our fair share of the information for each question as well as discussing the information we found as a group to reach our final conclusions on each of the three questions.